You're watching NBC4 working for you. Live from the area's leading news station, this is News 4 at 11. Tonight on News 4, improvements to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial have been unveiled to the public. Oprah Winfrey and her fellow jurors reach a verdict tonight in a murder trial. And a local police chief is trying to reassure people on edge following a series of attacks involving intruders. Good evening. I'm Jim Batts. I'm Doreen Gensler. There have been three attacks in Temple Hills, Maryland in the past month. Just this week, a man broke into a home and tried to sexually assault a 10-year-old girl. Prince George's County Police Chief Melvin High and other community leaders met with residents tonight. They offered safety tips and asked any residents with information to come forward. Police believe the same man who tried to attack the child may have also assaulted a 14-year-old girl and a 32-year-old woman. Authorities have been circulating flyers hoping to find the attacker. In Prince William County, Virginia, police have put up bulletins warning Woodbridge residents about a man they say raped a 16-year-old girl. The attack happened late Monday morning. Police say the teen stepped outside briefly, but when she went back into her apartment, the suspect followed her in and raped her. Police say at this point they don't know if the suspect was waiting for the victim or ambushed her outside. We really don't know. That's part of the investigation at this point, um, to find out whether or not he had been watching her or it was a random act of opportunity. Police say the suspect in this case was wearing a thick gold chain with three pendants. One of them had the name Miguel on it. The man who was once the police chief of Seat Pleasant, Maryland, was sentenced today to 10 years in prison for child pornography. Ronald Forrest was convicted back in May of taking pornographic pictures of a 12-year-old boy. He was also convicted of performing a sex act on the victim, who is now 16 years old. Forrest met the boy through a junior police program, which he ran. In court today, the judge said Forrest betrayed the community he was supposed to protect. Forrest maintains he is innocent. Immediately after today's sentencing, his lawyer filed an appeal. The first part of a major renovation project at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is now complete, and tonight the public got its first look. Jackie Benson is here with the story. Jackie? Doreen, the renovation involves a million-dollar lighting job for one of Washington's most visited memorials. On the east side of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, each panel filled with the names of those who are gone but forever remembered here is now gently, evenly illuminated with an upward wash of light. The project cost $1 million, money raised by the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Tomorrow, the west wall will be closed. And in about two months or so, we'll meet here again to see the entire wall dramatically illuminated. The new lights are set flush in the paving in front of the wall. The old ones projected nearly three inches above the surface and presented a tripping hazard. The old system was part of a hastily engineered retrofit done after officials realized the memorial was drawing visitors 24 hours a day. It became the subject of national attention a few years ago when it was learned many of the lights blew out on a regular basis. Uh, the source of the illumination is a metal halide lamp which has tremendous benefits in terms of life uh, and energy usage and output and color rendition. Within minutes after the new lighting was unveiled, the east section of the memorial was reopened to the public. The west side was then closed and will remain so until November. An emotional Anna Valley visiting from Washington State says she is always drawn to this sacred space. As I was walking in, you just, you can feel the, what they've done, it's just, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, the lighting is just wonderful. While the lighting project is being finished, visitors will not be able to access the west side of the wall. Park rangers promise to work closely with visitors, some of whom will obviously be disappointed at not being able to see and touch the name of a loved one. Jim, back to you. Jackie Benson, thank you. There's word tonight that militants are threatening to kill an American journalist kidnapped in Iraq. Micah Garin disappeared last Friday. Today, the Al Jazeera network aired this videotape. The network said Garin is the man on the tape, and it says his captors will kill him within 48 hours if U.S. forces don't pull out of Najaf. In the meantime, there is word that radical cleric Muqtada al-Sadr has accepted a peace deal in Najaf. But he is demanding that U.S. forces pull back from the city first. The plan calls for al-Sadr's militiamen to disarm 
and to leave their hideout in a holy shrine. The ceasefire agreement was announced today at the National Conference in Baghdad. But gunfire and explosions continued in Najaf, even after the deal was announced. A construction worker was killed by a flash fire this afternoon in Chevy Chase. Fire investigators say the man and another worker were in the basement of a house using some type of solvent to refinish hardwood floors when the chemicals caught fire somehow. The victim was overcome by the fire and unable to get out of the house safely. His co-worker escaped uninjured. The people who live in the house weren't home at the time. The incident is still under investigation. Maryland State Police have identified the woman whose body was found along a road in Frederick County yesterday. They say she was 45-year-old Deborah Ann Rond from Baltimore. The medical examiner says Rond's injuries indicate that she was hit by some kind of vehicle. Police are investigating this case as a hit and run, but they haven't made any arrests. Ron was last seen alive by her friends on Saturday. Police don't know why Ron was in Frederick County. It has now been 20 years since somebody stabbed a Virginia State Trooper to death at his home in Manassas. And tonight, for the first time, his daughter is making a plea for help in solving the case. An Yang joins us now with more on that story, huh? Jim, investigators don't believe there are many witnesses to this 20-year-old murder, but they do believe the killer may have told someone about it. The victim's family wants anyone with information to come forward. There's still a little bit of fear in me because there's still an unknown there. There's a person that's out there that we don't know who, who he is, where he is. This unknown person murdered Virginia State Trooper Johnny Bowman 20 years ago at his townhouse in Manassas. While time has dulled the grief of losing him, his family is as determined as ever to find his killer. It's been 20 years and that's a really, really long time, but you can't give up that hope. I know Johnny would want us to keep pushing forward and do it for his sake and for his daughter's sake. To be able to ask them why they did it and let them see what they've taken away from me and my family. Nikki Bowman was only two years old when her father was murdered, but she has felt his absence ever since. Mainly it's the what ifs. You know, what if you would have been around? Would things have been different? Would I still be the same person? I love my family to death and I'm glad for what I have, but it's just that piece, that one piece that's empty. Investigators say on August 19, 1984, Johnny Bowman answered a knock at the door at 4.15 in the morning. He was stabbed 45 times. The killer left behind three pieces of evidence, a construction hat, a brown wig, and glasses. There was a new detective on the case now, and his family has renewed hope that someone will come forward with critical information. I would hope it would be more than one person. I hope there's more people out there that maybe each person has a little piece of the puzzle, and we can put that puzzle together to bring some closure to it. Nikki Bowman plans to become a Virginia State Trooper herself. Everyone tells her she's the spitting image of her father, and she wants to live out his legacy. Jim and Doreen. Yang, thank you, huh? Coming up, a verdict is reached in the trial in which Oprah Winfrey has been a juror. A dramatic end to a chase involving a stolen delivery truck in our area. A noisy and frustrating situation continues to unfold in the local neighborhood. We'll tell you more about it. How about the weather, Bob? Jim, we had a few noises. The rumbles of thunder around uh, late uh, was actually yesterday, but I think there's more in our future, too. Wally, what you got? Bob, I've got a record-setting day for the American men and women over in Athens. Leighton Hewitt gets a leg up on the competition here in D.C. And George and Sonny visit with Clinton Portis, the firepower for the new-look Redskins offense. News 4 After Midnight continues. It's Toyota time, the nationwide clearance event, the year's biggest event. You've got to act now. Get big clearance savings on 2004 Camry sedans with a thousand cash back or 2.9% APR financing. Camry's loaded with standard features and goes over 500 highway miles on a single tank of gas. There's even 500 cash back from Toyota on all 2005 Corollas. Toyota time, selection, value, clearance now. Steady now. We're entering the cortex of the brain. That's the site of the injury. If I can relieve the pressure on a few key vessels, Doctor, we've got to get back to the ship. What? GE Healthcare. Allowing doctors to navigate the brain with a precision that until today was pure science fiction. You just said we had to get back to the ship. I did? Uh-huh. Yeah, you, you did. did. GE. Imagination at work.
What do these people know that you don't? That the best way to avoid sunburn is to stay inside? No. That the best time to join Bally is August. Right now, you can join Bally for as little as $18 down and $18 a month. That's our lowest prices of the year. <laughs> yep, but you have to call 1-800-FITNESS now for the summer and this offer are almost over. Valley Total Fitness at 1-800-FITNESS for your last chance to get our lowest prices of the year. At Infinity's limited engagement sales event, the car of your dreams is waiting. Like the Infinity G35 sedan, one of car and driver's 10 best for the second year in a row. See your Infinity dealer for attractive lease and APR finance rates. But don't wait too long. Infinity's limited engagement sales event ends soon. For a limited time, lease a G35 sedan for $349 a month. In Chicago tonight, a jury that included Oprah Winfrey has convicted a man of murder. Winfrey was picked for jury duty on Monday. The jurors got the case this afternoon. They deliberated for a bit more than two hours. That case centered around 27-year-old Dion Coleman. He was charged with killing another man two years ago in a dispute over $50. Coleman's sentencing is set for next month. He's facing life in prison. A wild scene involving a stolen delivery truck unfolded in downtown Washington today. The truck crashed into several cars after leading police on a chase. It started at 23rd and L Streets and ended at North Capitol Street and Massachusetts Avenue. The truck's driver was making a routine delivery when the suspect stole the truck and took off. The driver got into a taxi, followed the truck, and called police. At Massachusetts and North Capitol, the truck rammed a police car and headed into oncoming traffic. I just heard a loud boom, and then I came out, and then that's when I saw the truck run into the fire hydrant and this green car right here. And then I saw the police, they broke the window of this white truck, and they pulled the guy out of the truck because he wasn't trying to come out. The suspect, four police officers, and three other people were hurt. They are all expected to survive. The suspect is charged with carjacking and assaulting an officer. Police are trying to figure out if today's incident is connected to a similar case. On Monday, a produce delivery truck was stolen in the 1300 block of Connecticut Avenue Northwest. Anybody with information should call the D.C. police. When the broadcast continues tonight, there's new information about the plans to take Google public. It's not your traditional venue. We'll tell you about Olympic competition taking place in a rather unusual setting. And the humidity is back. Bob's going to tell us if it's going to stay around. Stay tuned. The last of the O4s are here. It's Chevy's model year end event. Now you can get amazing model year end offers on the 2004 Malibu and Malibu Max. Simply a better value for the money than Camry and Decor. Get a 2004 Chevy Malibu sedan for around $159 a month with Smart Buy Financing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. See your local Chevy dealer. Turn and arm. Synchronized swimmers, I need you to guess how many minutes you need to hold your breath every month. 100? That might be too high, and then you're just wasting minutes. 75? That might be too low, and then you've got big overage charges. Why waste money guessing? The Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan adjusts every month so you can save up to $300 a year. No guessing. What do you think? That's good. Yeah. Sprint PCS. See how much you can save. I'm Lisa Evans from Mattress Discounters. This set is mismatched, but it's not a mistake. Come to the new Mattress Discounters, discover your comfort, and get a great deal during our mix and match sale. We sell hundreds of thousands of mattresses each year. We end up with thousands of brand new one-of-a-kind pieces. So we're matching them up and selling them at great discounts. As long as you're not picky about color, our mix and match sale is a great chance to save. Danka and Artana. Question, why send a regular email when you could be like Ricky and send Comcast video mail? Yeah, I needed to ask my parents for something, so I sent this. Relish, old pickles. Send money. So, <laughs> your power's off? It's for effect. Video mail, free with Comcast high-speed internet. Call now for this great offer. 
the latest from the campaign trail now. Both candidates were heavily courting the military vote today. Senator John Kerry went to the Veterans of Foreign Wars Convention in Ohio, the same convention President Bush visited on Monday. Kerry blasted the president's plan to realign troops in Europe and Asia. Nobody wants to bring troops home more than those of us who have fought in foreign wars. But it needs to be done at the right time and in a sensible way. This is not that time or that way. Let's be Kerry clear. says the troop realignment the plan sends a message of weakness to nuclear-armed North Korea and will undermine the country's relationship with allies. Meantime, President Bush was in Wisconsin, where he touted his record of raising military pay and improving military housing. The president then announced a plan to increase education benefits for active duty troops and reservists in the National Guard. President Bush also defended his plan to bring thousands of troops home over the next 10 years. Congratulations. When you can replace uh, land troops with more effective aircraft, it uh, means people are stationed at home that they can be deployed rapidly, and it means less, uh, less, uh, less unsettling times for our troops. President Bush narrowly lost Wisconsin in the last election. The president now heads to Texas to prepare for the Republican National Convention. Google, the world's most popular search engine, is going public. And it may be ready for trading on the Nasdaq as early as tomorrow morning. Google held an unusual auction to set its initial stock price. The company announced tonight that the stock will sell for $85 a share. That's down nearly a third from what the company was anticipating. And it reflects that demand was below what Google was expecting. Competition at the Olympics today returned to the birthplace of the Games. Leanne Gregg is live in Athens with more on this. Pretty dramatic setting, huh, Leanne? Oh, absolutely, Doreen. It was the site of the first original Olympic Games more than 2,500 years ago. Spectacular place, kind of an open, untraditional seating. But it was not such an amazing day for the Americans. They were hoping to come into the competition, the shot put, and um, make a clean sweep of it, but it didn't turn out that way. Adam Nelson led the entire competition for the Americans. Then the Ukrainian tied him in the final throw. Nil Nelson, rather, still had a chance to win but he fouled for the fifth consecutive time during the competition. Afterwards, Nelson stayed in the shot put ring. He was pointing and pleading with the officials as the Ukrainian took his victory lap, carrying his flag as he was running around the ancient stadium. It's a beautiful place, not so beautiful for Nelson. He was devastated. He covered his face with the American flag and he sobbed. Later, he apologized to the officials when he realized that he truly did foul. He said he's coming back four years from now. It's his second silver medal. He truly wants to win the gold. It was the only shot put medal for the Americans. They did hope for a sweep. The U.S. men have the top 17 tosses in the world this year, all of them farther than Wednesday's gold medal winning throw. Not such a good day for the shot putters. Doreen. All right. Thank you. Leanne Gregg reporting live from Athens. Some people who live on Capitol Hill are anxious for their neighbors to return home not necessarily because they miss them so much. It's because they want them to turn off their burglar alarm. That can get on your nerves. Fast. The alarm went off early yesterday morning after Pepco finished some work <coughs> there, and it has not stopped ringing. The owners are out of town. Nobody knows how to reach them or the security company. The police say there's nothing they can do about it. One neighbor tied a towel around the arm in an effort to muffle the noise. <laughs> we checked in with the neighbors tonight. They say that thing is still ringing, but at least the towel is helping to keep the noise down just a bit. Those neighbors mm. may be afraid to come back. I would think so once they hear about that. Yeah. I think. Sledgehammer would do uh, yeah, that. Take care of that problem <laughs> uh, right away. Look at these split outside. It's you know. like August How, out there. Of all things, my goodness. And we had some showers around, too. Uh, those showers that came through Woodbridge and down into Prince William County, the second batch, and you folks down there in Charles County moved on in through Temple Hills, around Oxon Hill, and left a few raindrops around, too. Outside right now, our current temperature 73 degrees. Our high temperature, 86. And this August, still only one 90 degree day. I think we're going to change that over the next couple of days because we got the humidity. 73 here, a lot of uh, 70s around. 
There was our batch of showers that moved through, and this is some leftovers still coming in out of the mountains to our west. Here's how it looks on Digital Doppler and Storm Tracker. I'll take you out there. These are really now beginning to fall apart, and as you can see, no lightning in them. But uh, you folks around Winchester, Shenandoah Valley, you may see some of the leftovers, and certainly in the mountains of West Virginia. But I think there'll be just some leftover clouds by the time they get here and around us in Washington. Right now, around our Four Winds neighborhood storm stations, yesterday, uh, we are past midnight. Half inch of rain in Woodbridge and for the month, boy, it has been another wet month. Over four inches of rain. In the uh, low 70s, you can see our little yellow arrows. And when we get those southerly winds, look at the high temperatures around the east. 80s uh, to 94 degrees in St. Louis. So as we go through the next couple of days, that will be the feature. South to southwesterly winds, fair amount of uh, humidity. There actually is a wave that will be coming through and cleaning things out, but not until we really get later on into the weekend along about Saturday. So in the future cast, overnight tonight, no problems. We've got that southerly wind. And as we go through tomorrow, I think we're going to be seeing another afternoon of those th uh, thunder showers fire up, some possibly strong. Then as we head on into Friday in the future cast, the really warm air will be coming in again with a fair amount of humidity. And then later on, this weather front will be coming through, but that's not going to be happening until long about Saturday. So overnight tonight for the remainder of the night, hazy and humid. That's the word with the light winds. Temperatures when you get up early in the morning or mid-morning will be in the 70s. Tomorrow will be a hazy, hot, humid kind of day. Temperatures, I think, tomorrow may nudge 90 degrees for the second time. And once again, with that humidity, a chance of some afternoon thunder showers late tomorrow afternoon. Some of those could be actually firing up for you folks out toward the Blue Ridge. U, uh, UV index is high and the air quality code yellow. Then as we get into Friday, I think actually things will settle down, but it's going to be a real summery day. We haven't had many of these with the temperature 90, maybe as high as 91 or 92 degrees. I think a fair amount of sunshine around on Friday, just a slight chance for a Friday afternoon thunder shower. Then that weather front gets close to us, so Saturday do look for some showers and some thunder showers, especially during the afternoon. But that will be the end of the humidity. By Sunday and on into early next week, I think we'll be getting some cooler air in here and refreshing. As a matter of fact, Monday right now, only near 80 degrees, so still no sign of an August heat wave. All right. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Coming up, an American made history at the Olympics. Wally S. Sports. The most common first sign of heart disease is death. I went in at 6 in the morning, not breathing right. The nuclear scan showed no problem, but I was still suspicious, so I consulted with Dr. Schwab. His brand new CT angiogram makes a 3D picture of the heart. He discovered a spot where the right coronary artery narrowed to the size of a thread. I put in a stent and DeWitt still drives in his autocross races. We can now look through the chest and right inside the heart and never touch a scalpel. Excuse me. Hi, can I see that laptop? Sure. You can access the internet all around your house. It's wireless networking. Did you say wireless? I'm free, I'm free. Not just a puppet on a string, no ties to who is. Have your wireless network installed at home with the help of Geek Squad, available at Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Boy, what a moment tonight, huh? A couple of something? spectacular moments, yeah. And yeah. Gymnastics and the swimming, and swimming pool. Too, right. It was a good day for the Americans. For, you know, this was the longest standing and most tainted record in swimming. It was set 17 years ago by an East German team that years later evidence proved were chemically enhanced. Well, the American women changed that today. While Paul Hom became the first American man to claim the all-around gold medal in gymnastics. And did it the hard way. In Athens, this is the man of which we speak, Paul Hom, looking to make history, took a disastrous turn in the vault, falling out of his landing and crashing into the judge's table. That had him tumbling all the way to 12th place. But he picked himself up and rallied. And on the high bar, he was spectacular. Look at this move, each one reaching higher and higher. And then he stuck the dismount. He needed a 9.825 to tie for first. He delivered a 9.837. He captures the gold by the smallest margin ever. In the pool, American Caitlin Sandino anchored a world record swim in the 4x200, smashing the oldest swimming record by nearly two seconds. Natalie Coughlin, Carly Piper, and Dana Vollmer celebrate the new record time, 
53.42. Uh, DC Zone, Akhil Abdullah teaming with Henry Newsom advanced to the finals of the Double Skulls. Originally ruled a third place finish over Norway by one hundredth of a second. Later ruled the dead heat. Norway in the finals as well. Seven boats competing. Akhil Abdullah, of course, a GW alum who also graduated from Wilson High. On to baseball where Oakland's Mark Mulder became the first 16 game winner this season. A's complete the three game sweep of the Orioles 5-4. to four. Red Sox beat Toronto 6-4. to four, While Mike Mucina's return from the disabled list resulted in a 7-2 loss to the Twins at the Metrodome. Bottom of the first, Mike Mucina making his first start since spending six weeks on the DL. First batter he faces, Shannon Stewart. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. To deep left field, a leadoff home run. Mucina roughed up for four runs in four innings. On that blast, the Twins took the early one to nothing advantage. Not Mucina's night. Top of the fifth, Yankees trailing four to nothing. That's John Olerud sending this one to deep left field. Shannon Stewart, he did it with the bat. Can he do it with the glove? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To the wall. Making the catch, Johan Santana applauding the effort. Stewart, the star on offense and defense. Twins are winners over the Yankees. The final there was 7-2. Cut by the Redskins yesterday. Safety, Ifeani Ojalate has a new team today. Picked up by Dennis Green's Arizona Cardinals. Skins working today, looking to improve on an offense that's been mostly ineffective through the first two preseason games. But, as George and Sonny tell us, with Clinton Portis in the backfield, big plays are expected. We have not seen any running game in the preseason. Clinton Portis says, don't worry about it, folks, because they're going to give me the ball. They will give him the ball. Joe Gibbs' offense features the one running back. No fullback. The H-back doesn't get it. He will carry the ball over 300 times this year. He's going to get it as much as he wants. Power and safety, living in perfect harmony. Finally tonight, a story we don't see very often around here. A campground worker in Washington state recently saw a black bear sleeping in a common area. Mm -mm. She thought that looked a little strange, but then she saw a whole bunch of beer cans lying nearby. <laughs> mm -mm. They were crushed and covered in claw marks. Wildlife officials say it appears the animal broke into some campers coolers, stole their beer and drank it all up. 36 cans. <laughs> the bear woke up eventually and ran away, but it came back the next day. Oh, uh, you bet. Crews later captured it using donuts, honey, and more beer as bait. <laughs> they relocated that bear back into the wild. Where it's now looking for Alka Seltzer, yeah. Buffer, <laughs> yeah, and V8 right. juice. And a cold pack. Uh, more Olympic coverage up next. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow.